So let's talk about how to create a group policy. So group policies don't get associated with groups. They get as associated with organizational units. So let's start by looking in. Let's go to Tools, Active Directory, Users, and Computers. And right now, the users I've created, Diane Wilson and James Winston, and their associated groups are just in this users folder. Now, users is actually a folder, not an organizational unit. So I can't apply group policies there. But I can create a new OU. So I'm going to right click on my domain and click on new and organizational unit. And I'm going to call this Let's call this company because, you know, we're going to be lazy. And then this protect from accidental deletion. If you uncheck that, you can delete it and it will delete everything inside of it. So normally, let's go ahead and keep that. And now we have a new OU called company. You'll notice the icon here is a little bit different. So now I want to move my users, Diane Wilson and James Winston. I just hit my control key to select the second one. I'm going to click and drag them into company. Moving objects can, yeah, we know. All right, so now they are in my company folder. Now, for convenience sake, I'm going to go ahead and take my groups, management, management access, production, and production access, and I'm also going to move those into company. Now, sometimes I'll create a separate OU just for groups, but if I can keep users pretty much the default users, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to find things. So now all of my stuff is in the company OU. Now that it's there, I can apply a group policy to that company OU, and it will affect everything that's here. Now, you, groups really don't count, but remember group policies are broken up into two pieces, users and computers. The only thing in my company OU is users, so any changes I make to a group policy that's associated with company needs to impact users, not computers. Computers would actually go here under the computers folder, or I can create my own you know, company users, company computers as well. So let me close out of here, and we're going to open up group policy. So we're going to find our group policy management. And our group policy management console will expand our forest. We will expand our domains and we'll look at our uh, expand our domains. There we go. And here we're going to see company. Now, if we expand company, eh, there's nothing there. If we expand domain controllers, there we're going to see a domain controllers policy. Now, I can create, remember, group policies actually reside here in the group policy objects. And I can do this one of two ways. I can right click here and create a new group policy. And then I can link that group policy later to company. You can do that using uh, right click and you can uh, go to properties and you can enable and link your group policies. And the other way to do it is to right click on company and say, create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So if I already have it, let's say I already had created my group policy, I could right click on company and then link an existing GPO and it'll list all of the GPOs and I pick the one that I want. Now, a single group policy can be linked to multiple organizational units and multiple organizational units or a single organizational unit can have multiple group policies. So it's a many to many relationship. You're really not limited here. Well, I'm going to do this the lazy way, and I'm going to right-click on company and say create a new GPO and link it here. And I'm just going to call this restrictions because I can. There we go. All right, so now I have a new group policy called restrictions, and it's linked here. And I can right-click on either one and edit my group policy. Now, there are hundreds of settings in group policy, and you will never find them all. Um, typically what we will do, since we're not going to memorize where they're all at, typically what we will do is we will look for a setting that we want, to, or we'll think of a setting that we want to apply. And if we can't find it easily, we can Google it, and that's normally, we're going to have lots of documentation from Microsoft that's going to tell us where they're at. And that's kind of convenient. Now, the first thing I want to do here is I want to block access to the control panel into the PC settings. Now remember, this is linked to my company, OU and my company OU only has users. So any changes I make up here in computer config, not going to matter because there's no computers there. Well, it just so happens that what I want is under user and then policies and then administrative templates 
and Control Panel. And in Control Panel, you'll see we've got several specific things here, but we also have prohibit access to Control Panel and PC settings. Now, it's currently not configured, which means, yeah, that's, we don't care. Um, in another video, we'll go into group policies a little bit deeper, and we'll talk about conflicting group policies and group policy inheritance. But for the moment, since this is our first look at it, we're going to keep it fairly straightforward. So I'm going to open up Prohibit Access, and I'm going to choose Enabled. And down here, it's going to tell you more about it. Um, so I can choose to Enable or Disable. Enable says, yes, have this policy take effect. Disable says no, don't have this policy take effect. Now, because we did enable, and because this is prohibit access, then this policy will take effect and it will prohibit access. Disabled would say don't prohibit access. All right, so I'm going to click OK, and we will have that policy enabled. Let's take a look at another one. Let's hide the Internet Explorer icon from the desktop. That's going to be under Users, Policies, Administrative uh, templates and desktop. And here are a bunch of options. We're going to hide Internet Explorer because we want people to use Chrome instead. So we're going to click on Enable, Apply, OK, and now that's going to show that that's enabled. Here's a third one. Like I said, we're not going to hit all of them, but this is another one that is kind of common, and that is we want to disable access to removable storage devices. That's going to be under System, and then Removable Storage Access. And here I can deal with CD and DVD drives, custom classes, floppy drives, removable disks, tape drives. I want to do everything, and I want to remove uh, access to all of my removable devices. So if we're going to stop access to everything, what we want to do is this removable disk. And we've got three different things here. Removable disk, deny access, removable disk, deny access. But this is the one we really want. All removable storage access uh, classes deny all access. And that's going to take everything out. USB drives, floppy drives, flash drives. No removable storage, which means it's going to be harder for people to A, bring in viruses on removable storage devices, and B, uh, to take company data and possibly lose uh, control of it. So we're going to open that up, and we're going to choose Enabled, Apply, OK. All right, so now we've set all of our policies. And these policies, because they're linked here to in, or because they're in restrictions and linked to company, any users that's in that company OU is also going to have those policies. Now, also, you can put OUs inside of OUs. Like right here, the domain is the ultimate OU. And these are OUs inside of that OU. And so I could add other ones under company. I could add, you know, OUs for different departments. Anything I put at company is going to impact all the users in it and all the users in any OUs that could potentially be underneath it. So um, when you're plotting out your group policy options, you want to A, think about what you're trying to do. Odds are you can probably, if you can imagine it, you can probably do it in group policy. Um, Google it to find out where it is if you can't find it right away. And then think about who you want it to impact because you're going to put it in those OUs and remember that OUs are going to inherit settings all the way down. Now there are some other issues that we'll deal with in a later class uh, with group policy inheritance. For the moment, don't stress out about that too much. Uh, we'll keep our group policies simple for the moment until we get to more complex network infrastructures. Okay, so that is your basic introduction to creating and working with group policies.